it says wash and make yourselves clean take your evil deeds out of my sight stop doing wrong learn to do right seek justice defend the oppressed take up the cause of the fatherless plead the case of the widow come let us settle the matter the king james version says come let us reason together says the saith the lord though your sins be like scarlet they shall be as white as snow though they are red as crimson they shall be as wool amen may the lord bless the reading of his the word. word and if you have your bibles if you can turn back to that passage that we read in isaiah chapter 1 Isaiah chapter 1, starting with verse 16. Well, we're going to call this sermon, it's a New Year's sermon. We're, we're done with Christmas, so we, uh, we get over Christmas really quick here in our, our church. And I thought, okay, do I have a Christmas-themed sermon today, or do I get right in to looking at the new year? Well, the new year is going to happen before we get together again. It's going to be next year, next Sunday, so I thought we would have a New Year sermon. I'm going to call this sermon a recipe for a happy new year. Well, as some of you know, I'm doing a lot of the cooking at home, so I need recipes, and usually I just wing it. I, I don't have a lot of recipes, but here's a recipe for a happy new year. And here we're talking about real happiness. We're talking about the joy of the Lord, the happiness of the Lord. And for all of us, the prospect of a new year is a little daunting right now. And with what we've been going on now with, for two years, it's hard to sort of think of a happy new year. But of course, in scripture, our recipe for happiness is all about having the Lord, having joy, having contentment and hope in Him. Biblical happiness is so much more than what we're going through. Amen? Amen? The joy of the Lord is a state of being, really, Scripture tells us. It's more than our possessions. It's more than our circumstances. It's more than our situations. It's all about having joy in Him and deriving our happiness from Him and not what we have or what we're going through. And this, of course, is also the time of year where everybody starts making New Year's resolutions and we all start wanting to make changes in our lives uh, with the new year starting. We want to turn over a new leaf. We want to have a new start and a new beginning. And so we make all sorts of plans and we make promises to ourselves that we usually can't keep. That usually after three or four weeks, they kind of dwindle out. And of course, this is the time all of a sudden it switches from Christmas commercials on TV to all of a sudden ads for exercise machines and diet fads and self-improvement programs and get rich schemes they start bombarding us and all because they know that people want to change recently I came across a little article I think I've shared this before but it's called a dog's New Year's resolution and we have a dog family over here and Christy and I have a dog here's a dog's New Year's resolution it says I will not eat any more socks and then redeposit them in the backyard after processing <laughs> I will not chew my human's toothbrush and not tell him I will not chew crayons or pens, especially not red ones, or my owner will think I'm hemorrhaging. When I'm in the car, I will not insist on having the window down when it's raining outside. I will not walk under the big dog while he is going to the bathroom. I will not bark every time I hear a doorbell on TV. I will not steal dad's underwear and run all over the neighborhood with it. My head does not belong in the refrigerator. I will not bite the officer's hand when he reaches in for mom's driver's license and car registration. I do not need to suddenly stand straight up when I'm lying under the coffee table. I will not roll my toys behind the fridge. The garbage man is not stealing our stuff. 
And finally, I promised to shake the rainwater out of my fur before entering the house. We all get the picture. Resolutions are all about wanting to change. But so often, they fall flat after a few weeks, and by next year, we start all over again. Why? Because we try and change through self, self-effort, and in our own strength, and in our own way. And as believers, as Christians, believers in Jesus Christ this morning, lasting change will only happen if we put our trust in God and allow Him to work through us, through His Holy Spirit, to mold us and change us, and change us from the inside out, not the other way around. God is the ultimate resolution maker. Amen? Amen. He's the resolute one. That's where we get that term. He is resolute. His purposes and His plans and His determinations never fail. James 4.13, maybe you can turn there quick. James 4.13 in the New Testament. James chapter 4, verse 13. It says, now listen, you who say today or tomorrow or in 2022, no, sorry, it doesn't say in 2022. It says today or tomorrow, you who say we will do this or go to that city or spend a year there or carry on business or make money, why do you not, you do not even know what will happen tomorrow? This is the word of God. What is your life? You are a mist that appears for a little while and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, if it is the Lord's will, we will live and do this or that. In our passage this morning, back in Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 1, Verse 16, we have God's answer for change. We have God's plan and his remedy and his recipe for a truly happy new year. So let's read these verses again. They're just a few verses, so let's read them again. It says, wash and make yourselves clean. Take your evil deeds out of my sight. Stop doing wrong. Learn to do right. Seek justice. Defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Come now, let us settle the matter together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are like red as crimson, they shall be as wool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to look at five ingredients. Five things that will bring real, lasting permanent spiritual change. These are the five ingredients in our recipe for a happy new year. And we're talking, of course, about spiritual things, a change of the heart, change when it comes to growing in our faith and turning from our bad habits and turning from our bad attitudes, turning from our personal sins, and then trusting God more and serving Him, and loving Him more, and praying more, growing in our understanding of God, becoming more like Jesus. That's our goal. That's what we're talking about here when we're talking about ingredients for change. So number one, here's the first thing. The first ingredient for spiritual change is not very complicated. It says right in verse 16, and that is to wash, to daily wash. Look at verse 16, it says, wash and make yourselves clean. That's a simple one. That's the first ingredient. Number one, check that off, wash, daily wash. We know that's what we have to do when we have to stay physically clean, daily wash. There's a similar verse in Jeremiah chapter four, verse 14, it says, Jerusalem, Wash the evil from your heart and be saved. How long will you harbor wicked thoughts? Wash the evil from your heart. And the context of our passage is that Isaiah is writing to people who are very religious. These ancient Israelites were very religious. They look good on the outside, and God says in verse 13 of chapter 1 in our passage, if you just look back from verse 16 back up to verse 13, it says this. So this is the context of our passage. 
It says, stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is detestable to me. New moons, Sabbaths, and convocations, I cannot bear your worthless assemblies. And then verse 15, it says, when you spread out your hands in prayer, I hide my eyes from you. Even when you offer many prayers, I am not listening. Your hands are full of blood. Now it sounds kind of negative, but that's why later in verse 18, it says, though your sins are like red, like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Why are their sins scarlet? Why are their hands red? Because their hands are full of blood. And that's very symbolic of being guilty of something. When you're, you have bloody hands, that usually means you've done something bad. You're obviously guilty of something and your hands need to be washed. So the symbolism here, the main idea here is that your hearts need to be washed too. And we are, none of us are exempt. Our hearts, my heart needs to be washed continually. I need to get in that washing machine every day and be washed up. And these Israelites, even though they have unclean hearts, they continue to be religious. They continue to go through the motions, bringing offerings and sacrificing, and they keep having their assemblies. They keep lifting their hands up in prayer, and God finally says, no more. I'm not listening to you anymore. He even says it's detestable. When we fake it year after year, week by week, coming to church, and our hearts are not right, it's detestable, God says, because we're faking it. And the application for us is, we can come to church, we can go through the religious motions, we can put on a good, good front, but on the inside, we have bloody hands. We're unclean, we're guilty, we have unconfessed sin. And we just continue coming to church, going through the motions, even though we're kind of dirty and bloody on the inside. That's what we're talking about here. And then we wonder why we can't change and why we keep having the same problems and we keep repeating the same sins and the same habits is because we need to take a bath. We need to take a shower, a spiritual shower. We need to get, get cleaned up spiritually. And hopefully you don't take a physical bath once a year. Uh, I would hope not. Uh, we would all know about it, I'm sure. People want to get cleaned up and make New Year's resolutions once a year. But in, in the same way as we take a bath regularly, we should be taking a spiritual bath and making sure we're in, in short accounts with God. And it should be daily. King David says in Psalm 51, wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. And Again, I am preaching to me. When I preach, I want to preach to me first. So it's not as if I'm railing at you and doing the old, you know, finger pointing. No, I'm pointing to me first. Later in Psalm 51, King David says, cleanse me with hyssop, hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me and I will be whiter than snow. So yes, when we become believers, when we accept Jesus as our savior, there's an initial, I believe, a spiritual washing, a regeneration. We're born again, we're born of water and the spirit, the word says, we're saved, our sins are forgiven, our sins are washed away. That's positionally, we're accepted by God, we are declared righteous, we are justified. But then there's the idea of continually being saved. That's the sanctification process. Positionally, I'm clean and I'm accepted by God. We, we can't wash our own sins away. We can't cleanse ourselves. But in order to grow in my faith, 
and not just to go through the religious motions in order to grow in my love for God, grow in my love for his word, in order to stay in fellowship and communion and have a good prayer life and to have a close walk with God, I need to continually wash myself spiritually. I need to have a, a continual spiritual bath as often as I have a physical one, really. And washing ourselves spiritually just means to be aware of the, I was gonna say another word, starts with a C, but I'll say dirt. Oh, I'll say crap, is it okay for, for, for me? The dirt in our lives, the garbage in our lives. When we see that we have dirty or guilty or bloody hands spiritually, then we need to get cleaned up. And that just means to recognize sin in our lives and to make things right with God, to confess our sins regularly and daily, not turn a blind eye to things that we know aren't right. The best verse, of course, most of us know it, in the entire Bible is 1 John 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And the earlier verse, verse seven in 1 John 1 says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with the other and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So that's the first ingredient. If we want to have lasting change in our lives, and if we want to have truly a happy new year in a spiritual sense and have the joy of the Lord, then we need to wash daily, really regularly. We need to confess our sins and make things right with God and keep close tabs, keep short accounts with God, not to let things slide. And then number two, the second ingredient for spiritual change in this new, new year is another hard one. It's very complicated. It's not just a daily wash, but to daily stop. At the end of verse 16, God says, stop doing wrong. Now we could say, oh, oh Lord, what exactly do you mean by that? Could you be a little more specific? God says, stop, stop it. It's like a parent saying, no more, stop it. We say that to our dog all the time. These are, these are all commands. Wash, wash daily, stop daily. God really sounds like a good parent here. How can you be more direct than that? Stop doing the wrong things. And don't, be, don't rationalize it. Make excuses. Well, that's the way I was brought up and my mother didn't feed me properly and you, you, you know, and no, stop it. God says, take your evil deeds out of my sight. And this has the, ideal of, uh, the idea of removal. Just stop it. Get rid of those things that cause you to sin that put you in compromising positions. Those, and I'm thinking that it's habitual, addictive things that kind of trigger certain thoughts or cause certain attitudes or promote certain behavior. God says, get rid of them. Do some house cleaning. Remove those things that bring you down and take you away from God. 2 Corinthians 15, 34 says it, almost the same thing says, come back to your senses as you, as you ought and stop sinning. Come back to your senses as you ought and stop sinning. Ezekiel 18, 30, 31 says, repent, turn away from all your offenses, then sin will not be your downfall. Get rid of all the offenses you have committed and get a new heart and a new spirit. That's a good recipe. Rid yourselves of all those offenses that you've committed, admit those, confess those, and then get a new heart and a new spirit. And how do you do that? Well, you come to the Lord, and as you confess your sins and make things right, He will give you His Spirit and fill you with His Spirit. 
The story is told of an old deacon this one time in this church who loved to pray long public prayers. And every time he would close his prayers with these words, O oh Lord, take the cobwebs out of my life. And after many years of hearing this same phrase and the same prayer over and over every week, one of the other deacons got up and in his prayer he said, And Lord, while you're at it, kill the spider. Meaning kill the source of those cobwebs. You're, you know, if you want to get rid of certain things, go to the start. What causes it? What's the starting point? What's the source? Kill the spider. Stop doing wrong. Has the idea, of course, of true repentance. Turn away. Walk away from the source. True repentance means you turn away and you don't go back. And that's easier said than done. And that's why we need the Lord's strength every day. And for us, especially when it comes to a new year, we're very good at putting things off and procrastinating and saying, well, maybe next year or until I'm a little more ready, or until the timing is just right. No, God says now. Stop making excuses. Stop trying to rationalize your sin. Just stop, cease, and desist. Abstain, kill the source, and every day make it a way of life. Daily recognize sin for what it is and nip it. I'm really beating around the bush today, aren't I? So that's the second ingredient here. If you want to have lasting change in your life, for all of us, we need to daily turn away from sin and stop doing wrong. And then number three, the third ingredient for spiritual change in this new year is to daily learn. Daily wash, daily stop, daily learn. Look at the first part of verse 17. It says, learn to do right. Seek justice. So where do you learn to do what's right? Where should we seek justice? Or where do we seek the truth? Well, of course, it's in God's word. Of course, that's where we learn. Learn to do right. If we're not cracking the Bible open from one year to the next, and we're not going to Bible studies, or we're not learning truth or learning what's right, we're not gonna have a lot of lasting change in our lives. That's just the bottom line. And you know what? Let me be blunt. I've maybe been a little blunt so far. I'll get a little blunter. Hearing a sermon once a week isn't enough. I know I'm really good. No, just kidding. But hearing a sermon really once a week, it's great if you're consistent coming to church. But we need to be daily in the Word. That's where the spiritual food is. If we don't physically eat once a week, we need to eat daily for good reason. That's how we survive and grow and stay healthy. It's the same with the Word of God. D.L. Moody once said, the Bible will keep you from sin or sin will keep you from the Bible. Martin Luther once said that he studied the Bible like looking for ripe apples. He said, first I shake the whole tree, then I climb the tree and shake each limb, then each branch, then each twig, and then finally I look under every leaf. In other words, he wanted those apples. He devoured those, those gems and he ate them up. And that's how we should see the Bible it, as necessary nutrition, spiritual food for our souls that we desperately need that daily intake. There's an old poem that says, though the cover is worn and the pages are torn and though places bear traces of tears, yet more precious than gold is the book worn and old that can shatter and scatter my fears. When I prayerfully look in that precious old book, many pleasures and treasures I see, many tokens of love from the Father above who is nearest and dearest to me. This old book is my guide, tis a friend by my side, it will lighten and brighten my way. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I read it and heed it today. That has never changed down through the centuries. 
So that's the third ingredient for lasting change is to daily learn from God's word and to daily feed on the Bible and to daily seek his truth. And then number four, the fourth ingredient for spiritual change in this new year is to daily defend. Daily defend. Look at the middle part of verse 17. It says, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. You know, so often those things that hold us back, those habits or those attitudes or those sins, they're all self-centered. They're all inward focused. And so often they lead to worry and anxiety and self-pity and discouragement. But the encouragement here is to start reaching out to others in this new year, in this new startup, take the fo focus of ourself. And those are all action words. Defend, take up, plead the cause. What if you decided to reach out to somebody every day? Just to make it a daily habit, habit to say a kind word to somebody. Or to smile. Defend the oppressed. Somebody's gossiping about somebody and you defend that person. Or you help someone by taking up their cause, or you encourage them, you support them, or every day you just decide to show a little act of kindness. And if you're retired here this morning and you think you're on the shelf, you think God doesn't have anything for you to do, get on the phone and start calling those shut-ins in our church and start thinking about encouraging other people. Make that your daily habit. I'm going to defend somebody today, or I'm going to take up their cause. I'm going to plead their case. I'm going to invest myself in people today. And I'm going to be a defender and an encourager today. Psalm 37 verse 3 says, trust in the Lord and do good. Not just trust in the Lord, that's, that's great, but do good. Romans 12 verse 9 says, hate what is evil and cling to what is good. Psalm 37, 27 says, turn from evil and do good. So don't just turn from evil. Don't just confess your sins and make things right. That's great. But start doing good. Start doing something. If we replace the bad habits with good ones and we start seeing the bigger picture and we start seeing opportunities for ministry we start putting our faith into action we start taking the focus off ourselves we and we start serving god and reaching out to people that's going to bring health and growth and lasting change in our lives so wash make yourself clean every day and then stop doing what's wrong and then learn to do what's right Seek justice, seek the truth, study God's word, and then, number four, defend the oppressed. Take some action. Start reaching out to people. Start doing ministry. And then number five, and may I just give another plug before I get into the, the fifth ingredient. Our, our brother Lynn Smith was kind of on cloud nine uh, this week. O over two weeks, leading up to Christmas, he handed out about 350 either Christmas cards or packages and he prayed with 350 truckers, if you can believe that. And he, he just shakes his head at what God is doing. And now truckers are wanting to give his ministry money. Like, it's just... It, it's amazing what happens when you start being open to God giving you opportunities to serve him and reach out to, to people. We had, I, I think we might have shared this a few weeks ago, but the first time we were up there in December singing Christmas carols, there, there was a trucker that I could see him coming across the driveway or the parking lot, and he was not a happy camper. And so when old Lynn went out there to shake his hand, he put his hand up and he said, no, no, get away. And he walked into the convenience store. 
And he must have had a God moment in there. I don't know what happened in the convenience store, but he was in there for about 10 minutes. And then he came out and he, his face was just changed. He had this smile on his face and he had $10 in his hand. And, and, and he said, I am really sorry for the way I acted going in. I'm really sorry. I want to help help you. I want to give you this money. At that point, we refused it. And when we, we said, no, we're just doing it, just doing this ministry because we love you, we care about you, want to share God God's love. And he stayed and visited for about five minutes. So it's incredible what God can do if we are open to serving him and open to reaching out on his behalf. So now we come to number five. We're almost done, it's a long recipe. Number five, the fifth ingredient this year is for us to daily commune. Daily commune. Look at verse 18. It says, come now and let us settle the matter, says the Lord. And the King James Version says, come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. Oftentimes when we have problems in our lives and we fall into sin or we have bad attitudes or bad behavior, it's because we're not walking with the Lord. We're not reasoning with Him every day. We're not meeting with Him. We're not communing with Him. We are doing our own thing and we're letting things slide. We're not, again, keeping short accounts with God. And we're not praying oftentimes. We get into trouble and we're not meeting with God daily. We need to settle things with God all the time. It's just like in a marriage. When you let things slide, there's a wall that goes up. There's a barrier that goes up in any relationship. And you need to make things right. We need to reason with God daily. That's why we need to have a strong prayer life. In our personal lives, we need a strong prayer life, and definitely in the life of the church. We need to reason together with God and commune with Him on Sunday mornings and during the week. That's why at our church we try, we have tried over the years, to put an emphasis on prayer at our church because it's this very thing. We need to settle matters with God. And we have a prayer chain at our church and we have a prayer tent and we have prayer meetings every week. That's where the power is. That's where the strength is to come together and reason together with God. If prayer isn't a daily habit in your life, if coming to the weekly prayer meeting is not really a habit, a good habit, try and change that. And I don't care about your excuses or reasons, decide now. Right now, start praying daily and start coming out to our prayer meetings. And sometimes, yeah, they're a little routine, maybe I won't say boring, but we're doing it. We come together, we reason together with God. And in this new year, make that a priority. Christy and I were just saying a few days ago, when we look at, back over the years that we've been here, almost 10 years, talk about miraculous. God has answered hundreds, I would say hundreds and hundreds of direct prayer requests in our church. And if we want to see lasting change in our lives and in the life of this church, we have to pray. We have to pray. We have to reason together with God. There's no other way to be happy in Jesus, but to trust and obey. I think that's a him. Yes. So those are the ingredients for, from God's word for a happy new year as a recipe for lasting spiritual change is to wash to begin with. Daily wash and then daily stop what we're doing that's wrong and sinful and then to learn learn from God be in his word and then to defend do something get out there defend the cause of the helpless and the hopeless and then to commune with God daily that's the recipe there's no other way 
And as we go into 2022, I can't even say that prop, 2022. I can't wrap my tongue around that one. That so it sounds like a science fiction date, 2022. We don't know what the future holds. We don't know what this next year holds. We live in such a uncertain world right now. But of course, the old saying is, God is, we know it's not an old saying, God is the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus is the Alpha and the Omega. He holds the future. And that's why it's so important to stay right with him and stay in communion with him and to pray and to seek the Lord because as we do that, what does he do? He calms us and he gives us his peace and he gives us his spirit and he reminds us and he assures us and he shows us the way. Amen and amen. God bless you. And uh, let's just pray as we commit ourselves to him for this new year. Father in heaven, we want to continue before you and we want to just say again that within our lives and within our hearts and our, our own selves, we are so weak, we are so inconsistent, we are sinful creatures and we wander away continually. And yet we know that the answer is always with you as we look to you as we turn back to you as we put our eyes on jesus we know he is the fountain of life and truth and lord call us back call us back continually this year as we daily wash and as we stop doing what's wrong and as we, we learn from you and as we reach out to other people and we start to take the focus off ourselves, Lord, help us to commune with you daily. Help us to make things right daily and to be fed from your word and to be strengthened and built up in the things of God and not the things of this world. So Lord, I pray that you would bless each one here, encourage our hearts, and help us to seek you daily, to know that you are the only one who can satisfy and bring real, true, lasting happiness and joy into our lives. And so Lord, we want to just pray for those who couldn't be with us today and for those who are traveling, some of them traveling back tomorrow. Lord, I pray you'll bless each one. Be with our uh, shut-ins and those who, who would love to be here but can't. Lord, be with our church leadership and the uh, direction that we take into the new year. Just be, a, be there as our light and, and as our lamp as we look to you and as we continue on, Lord, bless us and keep us, we pray. For those who might be watching in the, uh, the future or in a little while from a distance, Lord, I pray that you would speak to each heart. If there's someone who is watching through the internet this sermon, I pray that if they don't know you as their Savior and their Lord, that they would come to that saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, that they would come to the cross, come to Calvary, turn from their sin, turn from themselves, and that they would look to you as the giver of life, the giver of joy and real happiness. And Lord, we pray that you would bless each one, encourage our hearts, help us to be strong in you as we go in to this new year. And we will give you the honor and the praise and the glory. In Jesus' precious name we pray, amen and amen.